In this tutorial we're going to look at how to upmix a 2.0 stereo project to a 5.81 surround sound project in Logic Pro X. So the first thing that we need to do is go up to the audio preferences in Logic and turn on the driver for the sound card, one that's got multiple output paths and uh, you'll need to check your studio guidebook to find out which sound card you've got there installed in the studio that you're using and uh, once we've changed that we can go to the IO assignments and set the correct output for the correct surround sound speaker position. So we need to check the surround sound 5.1 ITU775 protocol there and then click the initialize ITU button which will change the ITU channel ordering to left being 1, right being 2, center being 3 LFE being 4, left surround being 5, and right surround being 6. And once you've set that up on the IO assignment, you'll need to actually patch in the speakers using the patch bay, and you'll need to consult the patch bay diagram again in the studio that you're using. So now that we've got our speakers set up correctly, uh, we can have a little listen to the stereo version of this project. He started climbing before he could even walk. Let's go hide and save, Mommy. One, two. <laughs> we wanted him to feel free and independent, so we gave him space. You hope they never have to come for you or someone you love. But if they do, it's because they're the ones who can. The Westpac Rescue Helicopter Service helps save hundreds of loved ones every year. No one has ever paid to be airlifted from an emergency. Your support is the only reason this is possible. So now that we've had a look at the project here, we can start to have a look at the routing. And the routing part is really, really important to kind of have right before you go into the studio to try and put it in 5.1. You should make sure everything is submixed uh, correctly, all the effects are routed to the right places, and that you basically end up with uh, only a few stems going to the, the main outputs, ones for dialogue, foley, effects, music and atmosphere stuff. And everything should be subrouted and submixed at some point or to some degree to those those five main main outputs. Because the way to convert a stereo project to surround sound is really about how to change the input paths for the buses and the groups, um, which we'll look at in a moment. But before we look at that, if we take the Foley there going to the Foley stem bus 4, if we take these chopper sounds, these are actually all uh, mono audio files making up this helicopter sound. And we've got all of those there being bussed out to a submix and including a, a bespoke reverb for the helicopter. All of those are being submixed to a chopper. Uh, mix and that itself is actually going off to a another stem. So now all our tracks are rooted to the stems in the mixer here and these are the only ones going to the stereo output. So the next thing we need to do is change the input of these buses to receive a surround sound input on these stems here. We change that there and then the panners for the channels rooted to that surround sound bus will actually change to a surround sound panner. Now notice here that the chopper ones have not been changed to a surround sound panner. Some of those have stayed stereo uh, because the bus there has not been changed to accept surround sound inputs. So if we change that now, all of those panners have changed to a surround sound panner. Now the surround sound panner comes in a variety of guises. This first one here is a uh, submix uh, surround sound panner. This actually has all of the channels turned on and puts the uh, 
image in the exact center because everything that is already coming into this channel has already been panned somewhere in surround so everything is already where it's supposed to be which is why on this one we have the LFE level up at 0 dB um, compared to the other types of surround sound panels which we'll just have a look at here so this one in the middle is a a stereo to surround sound panel it has a left and a right speaker position that can be placed within that array of five speakers. It also has a discrete LFE level which you can turn up um, if you want to send some of this signal just to the sub. Um, and it also has a spread control where you can um, increase the uh, perceived stereo width of the signal between the five uh, surround sound speakers. The one on the right here is a mono to surround sound. Now this just has the diversity and the angle control uh, for the panner and it can be placed the individual sound within those five speakers. So it doesn't have the stereo spread as you would expect with a, a mono uh, signal uh, being panned within 5.1. It does have an LFE level though, just as the stereo to surround does. So if you want a portion of this sound sent to the sub as well, as to some of the uh, speakers within the array, you can do so with that LFE level. Another important consideration is once you've actually changed something uh, like an auxiliary bus to accept a surround sound input, any of the plugins that were already loaded onto that bus need to be changed in terms of their format. Now they will be needed to be changed either to a 5.1 version or a multi-mono version of the plugin. Um, certain plugins like Space Designer, Delay Designer, etc. do have an actual 5.1 version you can change. And if we look there and notice that the surround sound panel is no longer a stereo panel within the 5.1 array but a fully 5.1 surround sound panel um, because it knows that the plugin itself is accepting that 5.1 surround sound input and this is something that has to be done for every plugin that's on every bus that has been changed to uh, accept a surround sound input so there's a little bit of legwork here in the conversion stage when going from stereo to 5.1 Part of the kind of conversion process going on here includes looking after our sub channel. So we're going to add a multi mono uh, channel EQ to the surround sound master bus, and we're just going to add into the LFE channel only a low pass filter allowing um, a signal between 80 hertz and 120 hertz, anything below that level, to pass through to the LFE or the sub channel. Next, at the sort of stem level, we are going to get the surround sound panel and just turn off some of the individual speakers. So to start with, we will take the dialogue stem and we'll turn off the LFE there and turn off the rear surrounds and the front left and right. So the dialogue is only coming out of the centre speaker there. And then for the rest of the stems, we are going to do the uh, inverse of that. So we are just going to take out that centre speaker, um, leaving it free and leaving their space for the dialogue. And now that we've done that on the stem level, we can actually start to think about how we're going to pan our track uh, or our production in surround itself. So we can start to take some of the submixes and the buses, etc and start to actually place those in the surround sound speakers like this. Now, one of the things you do when you do move the panel for a stereo signal is it inverts the left and right if you move it just straight back. So I'm just going to correct that there. Uh, I'm just going to place some of those reverbs and the flashback delays further back in the speaker array as well. And now I'm going to place this beach and Atmos sound in the back speakers as well. I'm going to put those a bit wider. One of the things I should also mention is that when you do convert to 5.1, you will need to retweak the balance of the mix, as some things will be uh, not quite as you had them in stereo. So for, at the moment, the narration and the dialogue voiceover is is a little bit too um, too quiet. We will address that later. But if we see here on the multimeters. Um, there is actually space and it is significantly louder um, than the other channels but it still needs to be pushed up a little bit more now that we're working with five speakers rather than the two. Also of course this has been uh, down mixed to 
2.0 for the demo purposes. So what you're hearing is actually all the five speakers folded into the left and right just for the, the video tutorial here. And if we see there on the metering, we can actually see that that narration channel is still significantly louder than the other speaker arrays. But when we add all the other stuff in as well, we'll still need to, to boost it and retweet the, the balance of that mix slightly. So next we'll look at one of the more fun parts, looking at panning a sound in 5.1. And we're going to use the helicopter for this part of the demonstration. But here we'll just have a little listen to what we've got going on there. And sometimes we'll follow the, the camera angle of what's going on especially in that shot there. Uh, in other times we'll just try and perpetuate that, that sense of space um, as we follow that ha those helicopter sounds around the speaker array. So as you can see there, we've got quite a few individual recordings there that make up that part of the, that one helicopter sound. So we're just going to work on them in small kind of chunks, one one or two recordings at a time. And at the moment we have a significant amount of reverb added onto the chopper. So that w might make the panning a little bit more difficult. Um, but we'll see, we'll probably mute that in a second. But we want to use the surround sound panner and just get it to slightly move the chopper sound per recording basically so we'll just hear how that kind of comes into action on that first one there and we're going to turn the automation mode to touch so every time I touch a control on a parameter it will write the automation that I've done there so when I let go it snaps back to its original position so we'll just change that back to read, which is really important to do when using touch mode, because we only want to add that in at the right point. So that second chopper sound we'll take here, open up the surround panel there. And continue panning that for that clip. Just going to move that to its start position. So we're going to start over there at that rear right speaker and move across. This time we're going to move that third third chopper sound effect and do some panning automation for this part here. This has got kind of two sounds layered up for this part, but we'll just do the first one. You can see there it's off in the distance and then comes across that second shot there. And that's one sound effect. There's kind of three layered up there, so we'll just start with this one in our front left speaker. And we'll move across. I want it to kind of be behind us by that point there. So we'll get this and have a listen to the second sound effect. So chopper four, we're just gonna get it to copy the pan diversity and angle. So it's going to highlight that automation data there, press Command C and then Command V in the chopper 4 and get that surround sound angle as well. Do the same thing, make sure that the playhead is starting at the loop point there, so paste it in the right place. And now we can see that their uh, surround sound angle and radius has been copied for chopper 3 and chopper 4 together so they're kind of panning in unison really which will help 
with the localization of that sound. So I've accidentally there, because I haven't turned off touch mode, I've accidentally recorded in that mute command there. So I'm going to change that back to read and go back and undo those mute automation because that actually was written in as automation, sort of showing why it's kind of really important to stay on top of, of your automation modes and make sure you, you turn them back to read when you're not using any writing of the automation. So Chopper 5 is going to be quite a good one. I think this is going to be the surround sound panel that, that really does that kind of classic classic move of going from behind you to over your head. But we might actually start it maybe in that top left and bring it down over our heads from that front left speaker to that rear right one. See that sort of motion there, kind of sweeping across. And there you won't be able to hear it, you can kind of see it spread across the multimeter down there. And um, so I'll put that into touch mode. So I'll just Try that again and get that a bit smoother. So there's a few little spikes there. Because I've tried to redo the automation in touch mode, it's creating a few spiky moments in the automation. So seeing that purple lane in the diversity, uh, so yeah, in the radius diversity, get rid of those nodes to make a smoother trajectory and probably remove those top ones for the angle as well so it kind of comes from, from one point and doesn't radically alter its position halfway through the sample. So we'll just grab all of those and get rid of them. And then this should be a smoother sort of pan movement across the recording. a bit better. Let's make that a little bit higher so it just goes to that furthest extreme part there. Just change that a little bit. That angle made that again a bit smooth. It's a little bit rickety going backwards there so that's better. So now we'll we'll skip on to look at some of the reverb settings. And although the uh, panner is sorry, although the reverb sends are post pan, we still want the returns actually being more weighted to the rears than to the fronts, as we're going to go for that more ambient approach to the surround sound panning. We'll probably pull the level down a little bit on the reverb. But that's that's all sounding pretty convincing now. It's a nice effect for the helicopter. Now visually on the multimeter, in the kind of balance correlation meter, we can see where those sounds are. We can kind of see the helicopter panning around a little bit. And as we have another listen round we can really see that visually in that uh, correlation meter that the 
reverb returns being weighted to the rear, really pushing that overall image of the helicopter to the back, which will actually be very effective and, and work really nicely when the rest of the surround stuff is in. So when the music is in the front and when we have some of the foley um, out to the sides and the uh, dictations at the front as well, that will really create a nice surround sound effect there. And now let's have a little listen to that as a mix overall. So there's not quite enough sub in those helicopter parts there. So I'm just going to go back to the individual surround sound panel because we haven't actually uh, put these in. I'm just going to go in and add a little bit of LFE signal for each of the chopper sounds. So that's starting to sound pretty good. I think the vo voiceover and the dialogue um, track could still go up a little bit. So I'm just going to go into the automation lane here and this trim control. Um, if you do have any automation that's already written, the trim control will allow you to adjust all of it and scale, scale all the automation either up or down. Um, so I'm just going to make that a little bit louder there. So I'm just going to push up that trim just a tiny tiny bit more. It doesn't really quite sound uh, as loud as it did in 5.1 for this down mix tutorial version um, but it's pretty close there and I think we're at the stage now where we're kind of ready to bounce down the mix as a whole. And now I'm just going to highlight all the regions and get the cycle locator to go around the entire project so I can set our kind of bouncing uh, length of duration. So now we're going to go just to file, go to bounce, project or section. I'm going to tick PCM as the file type. You can choose the sample rate that you want it to be at. This is 44.1, um, not because that's what film should be, but just because that's what it needed to be to capture the audio for the tutorial. Uh, we're not going to do any dithering there, we're not going to worry about that too much, but the main thing we need to tick is that surround sound bounce so that we actually end up with a 5.1 audio file. And I'm going to turn overload protection only for the normalising and include an audio tail as well in case I haven't quite got that decay at the end there right if I haven't left enough space and reverb tails so do we don't want to chop them off or anything like that so we'll leave that there and go for our PCM version and click bounce. Then we'll title it in the normal way and then hit the bounce button and it will give us our surround sound bounce. And I'm doing it offline so it's relatively snappy there. And next we'll have a little look at going file and go movie export audio to movie so what this does is it also creates a copy of the film and bounces out the audio in 5.1 and then just reattaches that 5.1 audio file to the video clip that it's copied and um, so you create a new file entirety um, but you're not transcoding or re-rendering so it's quite quick to do um, so we're not actually making a new file type there. 
and just to finish off then if we wanted to then make some adjustments in the lab or carry on working on this in the lab we can put this down mixer 5.1 to stereo on and then readjust some of the things so like the center level was quite quiet when we first came from surround sound so I'm just going to put the rear and left surround and right surround down a bit and then turn up the center for that down mixer he started crying before he could even walk. In order to check the 5.1 surround sound bounce uh, has worked in your file, you might want to play it back. And to do that, we're going to use QuickTime Player 7. But before we delve into that, we'll need to open up the audio MIDI setup and set up uh, or configure the sound card to work with the correct speaker configuration. So if we just go to configure speakers here then select 5.1 for multi-channel and then check that our speakers are front left one front right two center three sub four left surround five right surround six and hit apply and done then we can navigate to our surround sound video there right click and open with QuickTime Player 7 and then and then go window show movie properties or command J and then go to the soundtrack and go to the audio settings within the soundtrack and then here if you if the audio doesn't play back correctly and you're missing the surround sound speakers uh, even though you've got them patched in on the patch bay. Uh, you might need to change them to discrete channels. So to do that you would just simply set left to zero, right to one, etc. And then before we do that, if we save that there in the file, that will then be saved to the file itself. So next time you open it in another studio, it'll play back properly. And then when we play this, it should play in surround. He started climbing before he could even walk. Let's fly hide and save, Mommy. <laughs> we wanted him to feel free and independent, so we gave him space. You hope they never have to come for you or someone you love. But if they do, it's because they're the ones who can. The Westpac Rescue Helicopter Service helps save hundreds of loved ones every year. No one has ever paid to be airlifted from an emergency. Your support is the only reason this is possible.